Hello, so welcome to Brown's Couch. We're here again today to talk about, you know, life issues, just to hear Brown's perspective on a lot of things. And the reason why I wanted to do this show is because I feel that Brown um, has quite a lot of interesting angles to issues of life, and it's always good to hear from you. So today, I want us to talk about Mobad. Now, the whole world, I'll say, st stood still after his death. You know, many people were talking about Mobad. You had Obama tagging, talking about it. Everybody across the globe were talking about Mobad, justice for Mobad, which in itself was a great movement, I would say. But there was, there was a fundamental conversation that was missing in all this. The fact that nobody was discussing lessons learned. You know, people were just talking about Mobad, the issues that required justice, but nobody's really talking about what can we learn from his entire experience? Uh, what can we teach our children? What can we take away from his experience? How do we learn from it? So I'd like us to touch on a few things. First thing is probably on cultism, um, drugs, uh, even record labels, uh, and, and stuff like that. And, and it's because um, I know that you've been in that situation. Many people don't know that you used to sing, and you were young, and you had similar dreams as Mobad. So you might be able to relate more than many people on, 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 on those various evils. Let's start with the issue of um, the fact that he dropped out of school. I mean, we don't like to judge people, right, on, on the fact that they job because there are lots of dropouts out there who are doing well, and some are even graduates who are doing horrible. So it's not really about the fact that he dropped out, but what would you say to the fact that, unfortunately, he said it in his song, that he dropped out of school? Mm. Well, how did, that, how did that make you feel? What do you think about that entire episode? Yeah, um, first of all, before we proceed, I would first of all like to appreciate all the fans, all Mobad's people, all the people that came out to seek for justice for him. It's not a good thing to cast your young. It's not a good thing for a man of that age to just die. So I thank everybody. May the good Lord reward all of you. And um, may the Lord compensate Mobad's family mm. for his demise. Now, going to your question about um, music, at a point in time in my life, when I was much younger, my brother and I, we had a music group or a, a duo called Crude Oil. We, we had loved music since we were children. And um, all the times we were going to school, mm. school was just a backup plan for us. Mm. The ultimate plan was to go to America, maybe join a boy band, that's why we particularly liked Backstreet Boys mm. and Blue. Mm. But along the line, there were certain things I realized. You see, when a boy, mm. you suddenly see your boy or your daughter come home, they are busting all sorts of lyrics, they are rapping, they are singing, they are writing songs, and you see an interest, an unusual kind of interest in music when they are going to school. Please pay attention to them. Pay attention very strong attention to them because it could lead to either of two ways. It's either it leads to destruction or it leads to greatness. At that point, parents need to be involved. Monitor them, ask them questions. And if there is anything you can do to quickly help them, mm. to show them whether it can work or not. Mm. Because the better, the, it, it's better if you quickly fail mm. than to fail after a long time. Right. So in my own case, by the time I got into the university, I wasn't actually interested in academics anymore. Mm. But because I had a strong background, my, the primary, secondary school I went to, solid. So it was quite difficult for you to tell of my academics. I always passed. And I was lucky to, because I stopped going to class, just like Mobat mm. said, that I stopped going to classes, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I stopped going to classes as well. Okay. But I had a good friend then who was always assisting me, <laughs> teaching me stuff I needed to know because I never went to class. His name is Fola, you know Fola Bikuti. Yeah. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria presently, today. But Kuti was there for me. So all my failure to attend classes, mm. it didn't really show because he was always there to teach me later on. But at that time, the only thing I was thinking about was music. Mm. By the time I got to law school, I was doing all the schooling for the sake of yeah. my background, my dad. Yeah. I mean, I was raised in a university. It's, it's, it's unheard of yeah. for you to drop out. So right. I couldn't drop out. But by the time I got to law school, when I was writing my bar exams, 
I failed civil procedure. And I failed civil procedure because I was heavily distracted. Even in law school, I never went to class. So that was where I had to go and rewrite it. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I wasn't even interested. And this was because of your love of music, Because right? of the music. Yeah. Because all the time, I was always at the Towers karaoke, mm -hmm. singing, preparing, yeah. and all that. And the same thing happened with my brother. Right. Eventually, Babs, my brother, mm -hmm. he had to drop out of school, mm -hmm. partially. And the luck we had with him, why he wasn't totally ruined, was because my father was very involved. His GPA dropped below one at the Obafemi Awolowo University, where he was studying computer, uh, um, right. computer economics or something. And by the time my father had, we all expected my father to run around to make moves for him to continue so that he could just change the figures and all that. But my father said, no, he wasn't going to, he could never do that to help him change uh, Max and all that. So my father called the vice chancellor of Babcock University. And because of the kind of relationship they, they had, had right. They transferred my brother to Babcock to go and start in part one to study computer. All over again. From all three. over again. All over again. He started all over again. Yeah. And because at that time, Babcock was like a mushroom university compared to a school mm. like OAU. OAU right. And so it was very hurtful for my brother mm. that he left OAU to go and start in this new university mm. that didn't mean so much. Back then. Back then. Mm. Are you with me? But because of that, he was depressed. There are times depression can actually lead to something good. Because of that state of depression, he focused on his academics fully. So by the time he finished his, his course, he finished with a second class upper. Right. Immediately went for, he went for NYC. Mm -hmm. By the time he was finishing NYC, assuming he finished NYC today, his employment letter at KPMG was the following day. Right. He took all the tests. He blasted everything. So what you're everything. saying, let's just put it in proper perspective, is that yeah. a young person is in school, a young boy, for example, yes. fall in love with music, parents, yes. must, that you have to do a you close have marking. To close because mark at them. that time, either they can be distracted, they will be distracted, or you can actually um, guide them to, 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 to success. success. So yes. in your case, you, you, you were lucky to have a friend who was supporting university. Yes. The brother too almost got distracted, but yes. thank God for his father to be directed. Exactly. So when young people are in school, especially yes. those who are falling in love with music and yes. stuff like that, watch they need close them. Attention. Because okay? It's like a bug once it, it gets hold of you. Right. You can't think of anything. And the danger about music is that the window of opportunity is very short when it comes to the years available to you. Most people, they blow between the ages of um, 16 and 30. So if you have not found your bearing at 25, at 30, mm. You may not be able to do anything right. in the music industry. It's, a, it's, it's an industry for young people. So that's why once you are hitting 27, you become desperate because you have to make mm. your mark mm. at that time. If you don't make it, you are out of that industry. Yeah. You don't just come at 40 yeah. to come and blow. So you can only grow, grow into it, mm. ca carry on, maybe all your life for the next 20, 20 years. But if you are just going to hit the mark, you have to hit it. Under 30. Early. So that's yes. probably why your mobile was, was really struggling. You'll be desperate. desperate I, was, I was that Let's desperate. talk about the issue of record label. Because okay. also you also had that experience. Yes. You're desperately looking for a record label. Yes. I know you thought you were going to go to America, London, and this yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you told me the story about how you face drugs. You also yes. face the potential, potential cultism. Even you, yes. in your quest for success in music. Yes. Tell us a bit about that. Let's start with the record label part. Now, what they call a record label has no meaning apart from an institution that will provide for the financial needs of your music. What you need in music is proper production, mm. proper promotion, and proper distribution. Mm. All these three things require money and a bit of expertise mm. in getting them done. Right. That is what the record label does for people. As no matter how talented you may be, if the, your production is not done properly, if your distribution is not done properly, mm. if your pr promotion is bad, you are not going to get anywhere. So because it costs money, people try to look for people with a lot of money to yeah. invest their money in it. That is what is called a record label in Nigeria. It right. is nothing beyond that. So actually, if you have the funds to do it yourself, yeah. Yeah. you don't need a record label. For example, at the time, Mohit came. Mohit was Don Jazzy and Dibanj. Right. They were the musicians and they were the record label as well. Right. 
And why was that? Because they had the money themselves. Right. Nobody needed to sign them on. Right. They had the money to do those basic things. But someone like a Mobad, mm. looking at his background, he couldn't find that money. At the time I got into that situation, I looked for record labels. In fact, um, Obi Asika's record label, mm. they sent my music to them. They just didn't respond to it. They didn't like it well enough or something. Now, somebody now introduced me to someone who was supposed to give me a record label. That is why you have to be very careful in your quest mm -hmm. for your record label. Be very, very careful. Because once you enter into partnership with the wrong people, mm -hmm. you are in trouble for the rest of your life if mm -hmm. care is not taken. There was this guy that was introduced to me at um, the Club Towers karaoke, the, the casino and the karaoke. Akim was the one who introduced him to me. Right. May Akim so rest in peace. Akim used to run a lot of clubs at that time, and he had a lot of wealthy friends. So it was one of the friends that was introduced to me at the karaoke. And I asked him for his name, and he said his name was Mr. Perfect. I didn't have a problem with Mr. Perfect initially, and Akim praised him. The money he had, that he had over 50 houses in VGC, which sounded interesting to me, mm. that someone with that kind of wealth mm. should be able to fund my music. And I was very happy about that. So we continued the conversation into the middle of the night. This was around 12, 12, PM, 12 a.m. Yeah. So we were supposed to go to their house, mm. to his house in VGC. I actually wanted to sleep over there. Mm. That would have availed me the opportunity of seeing the wealth myself. Yeah. And I could have used that to gauge yeah. if he had enough money to actually fund, fund my music. Right. So at the time we were about to round off to leave, I asked him for his name again. He said, Mr. Perfect again. This time around categorically suggesting to me that he wasn't ready to disclose his real name. Right. The moment I realized he wasn't ready to disclose his real name, it became a red flag for me. You see, if you are wealthy, you are prosperous, you are a legit person, telling your name shouldn't be a problem. problem. Right. So immediately I got the hit. Ah, ah. How will I ask you your name and you refuse to disclose? Right. You must be a shady man. Immediately I pretended as if I got a call. And I walked away. And by the time I was coming back, I told them that, ah, sorry, I cannot go to VGC anymore. Mm. There is an emergency. Yeah. And I took off from that point. Mm. I never went back to them. I never consulted okay. with them again. Because the, assuming I went well, there. How did you know that? You know, that was based on your own background, your own upbringing. Your mother was able to tell you how to identify red flags. But in mobile case, unfortunately, his parents couldn't help him to, to identify red flags in, in cases like that. that, that that's the advantage of being under your parents, the mm. two of them at the same time. Yeah. When daddy and mommy are there to nurture you, to train you, there's certain things, I, I mean, like that reaction, they can't teach you that in a, in a school or in a university, but I knew that from home. Right. That he, he, I mean, a man refused to disclose his name, you flee from such people. Okay, so let's talk about the issue of cultism, because as I said, all throughout the conversation concerning mobile, everybody was just talking about who killed him, what happened, record label, but nobody was talking about the drug use and cultism. Now, as somebody who was young, you were mobile age 27, yeah. desperately looking for a record label, desperately yeah. looking for a break. Yeah. Um, and when things fell apart, yeah. you also confronted the issues of drug abuse and cultism. Could you just give us an idea of your experience so that people can learn from your own experience? Yeah. Um, my drug, my encounter mm -hmm. with drugs yes. almost happened. Okay, it didn't happen. In my university. And I will tell you how it went. Okay. Uh, and if not for parental intervention too, right. it would have gone really bad. Right. A young friend of mine when we were in the university traveled abroad with drugs and made a lot of money. Mm. And I really liked it. I found it interesting. Mm. And I decided to do the same. Mm. But he was an American citizen. Okay. And I... I'm Nigerian born. Right. So I needed a, 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 an American passport right. or a British passport. So I went to meet another friend who had a British passport. He too was of similar background with mine. His dad was a professor. Um, I will just call him yeah. Mekori. I won't mention his name. And Mekori, I had a conversation with Mekori that Mekori, I need your British passport and I want to use it to carry cocaine. <laughs> Say that. Yes, he knew, he, he's a bubble, he, okay, he's okay. a bubble too, he understood. Yeah. And we discussed that once I come back, this is how much I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. And even if you wish to travel yourself, right. 
I can hook you up, but let me use your passport for this trip. And, and it said he didn't have his passport in the house, that his father had taken the passport to the office to go and hide in a safe in the office. But he was going to, because the father had to do that, because he was a bad boy too. Yeah. You get, so he was supposed to go to his dad's office to go and steal the passport and come and give to me. But along the line, his younger brother, about seven years old, he overheard our conversation. Mm. We didn't know he was hearing us. Yeah. And immediately we left. He just went to meet their dad, reported everything he heard to their dad. By the evening of that day, their dad was in my house to come and report to my dad. It was my father was breathing fire. Mm. And from that point, it was as if my dad attacked a bug on me. That everywhere I went to, you everywhere. He, he told all his friends, all the other lecturers, all my lecturers, my own friends, that any move I made, that I, he must be so alerted. So you watched your plans to illegally use yes, somebody else's passport. Exactly. So, to so carry once that immediately that plan was botched, yeah. I, I lost all interest. Right. That if I can't have a British passport right. to do it, I'm not going to risk so my life with a Nigerian do passport. Parents, I, do, I, I don't want to go into the cultism issue because you also tried to join some. Yes, circles. they talked to me about cultism. You see, when cultism came in, mm. was later when I didn't find a record label. Yeah. I now, I now went to take a loan from Standard Chartered. Hmm. Are you with me? I took a loan based because I was already working in V-Mobile right. at that time. Right. So I had access to uns an unsecured loan right. from Standard Chartered. And the loan was sufficient to do the production, the promotion, and the distribution of my music. Okay. So I decided to do that. But after I did all that, for over two years, I was spending the money trying to push the, mu the music Till it became, or for it to become a hit, yeah. but nothing happened. And in the course of my running around, somebody told me that, look, this thing is spiritual. This thing is spiritual law. You have to go spiritual about mm. it. That was where the cultism was suggested, was mm. recommended. Mm. But I thought, because I didn't want a group of people called a cult to manipulate my life, yeah. to, 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 to dictate what I was going to be doing to right. me, I wouldn't want to be under anybody's whims and caprices. Right. Do you get, yes, we are all in a cult, but then some people can actually take advantage of it mm. and treat you anyhow. So I didn't do that. So cultism is only uh, a group of people telling you that they can manipulate things for you spiritually. People in cults, they consult other people for the darkness, for the power they use. So it just occurred to me that why not go to the source <laughs> of the power directly? So what did you do? Of course.